Hi, my name's Molly Hatch and I'm part of Data School Cohort 18. This is the first video of a mini series all about building macros in Ultrix. Firstly, what are macros? Well, macros are a set of tools that carry out a standardized task that we consolidate into one singular tool. Now, to build out the logic needed in a macro, you'll need to use the interface tools, and we'll go through how we can set up some of these tools as part of this series. This series will cover three types of macros. Standard macros help standardize a task by consolidating multiple tools into one single tool. Batch macros allow us to run the macro for each record or group of records and union the results together. And finally, iterative macros allow us to run the macro over and over again until a certain condition is met. Now I'm going to kick off this mini series by looking at standard macros, which are great to use when you want to automate a repetitive task. So essentially, a standard macro packages up a process which you can then use in different parts of your workflow or different workflows entirely. And you can also set up the configuration of your standard macro to allow your user to configure it as they like, which can be done using the interface tools. Now, I'm going to jump straight into an example to show you how we can go about setting up the standard macro and some of the different options that we can configure. But before I get started, it's worth mentioning that this is a simplified example to help get us familiar with the setup of a standard macro. So in this example, we can see the number of units for five different products at the bottom of my screen. Now, the macro allows us to specify the size of the box that we want to use to package up these units. So in the macros configuration, we have the option in this drop down to select a box size of 6, 12 or 24 units. If I select 12 for now and click run, I can then see in the output the number of boxes that will be created. Great, so let's go ahead and build this macro together. So I'm going to start by opening up a new workflow, which is where we're going to build out this logic. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is change the workflow configuration to be a macro. And I can do that by simply selecting my canvas. And I can see I have a workflow option in the top left hand side. If I select that, you can see at the bottom I have a macro option. By selecting that, I can then choose in this drop down the type of macro that I'm going to build. And for this example, we're going to be building a standard macro. Now, this will also be updated automatically as soon as we drag a macro input tool onto the canvas, but I'll just set it up manually for now. Great, so let's get started with this macro. So what we need to do first is set up some data for us to use to test out the logic of this macro, which is essentially dummy data and doesn't need to have the same values as our original data set. However, the data types of the fields in the macro input data and the corresponding fields in the actual input data need to be the same. So I'm going to drag in a macro input to configure this test data. I'm going to select interface and drag in a macro input. This will serve as the input anchor to our macro. Now in this tool, I can either manually set up my test data or connect to a file. For this example, I'm just going to use the text input option and I'll add in one column. I'm going to call it units which is the same column header as my original data. And I'll just add in a few values. Now, I don't need to add in the product column as it won't be used in the macro. So I'll just click OK. Now, below that, we have some additional options which allow us to rename the macro, but I'll just skip that for now. And we can see below that, we have the option to show field map, and this has automatically been selected. This will allow us to map the fields that flow into the macro with the fields being used in the macro, which is useful if fields are named differently. However, the field units that we've just set up in our text input will automatically match the units field in our actual input. So we don't need to map the fields in this case. So I'll just deselect this option. Below that, we also have the ability to give this macro an optional incoming connection, which will turn that input anchor white. Great, so I'll click run, so I can just see my test data in the results pane, and I can now go ahead and build out the logic needed in this macro. So we want to divide our number of units by either 6, 12, or 24, our box sizes, depending on what our user selects in the macro's configuration. So I'm going to start by adding in a formula tool, 
and I'll add in a new column and call it number of boxes. Now to calculate the number of boxes, we're simply going to take our units column and divide that by say six for now, but that number six will be updated by the user's um, selection in the macro. Now, um, to make this example um, simpler, we're just going to round up this value if it's um, not a whole number. So I'm just going to wrap this in a seal function, which will just round up the value to the nearest whole number. Now, the final thing I need to do here is just make sure the data type is correct. So I'm going to set this data type to be an integer 16, which is our whole number numeric data type. And I'll just click run to make sure the formula is working correctly. Great. Now we want this value of six, which is currently in my formula, to be dynamic and set up by our user. So I'll now need to make use of another interface tool. And I'll just move these down a little bit. Now, in our example, we want the user to select one of three options in terms of box size. So I'm going to use a drop down tool which will allow the user to make a single selection from a drop down list. So I'm going to drag that into my canvas. I'm just going to delete that connection for now. Now, in this drop down tool, I need to specify the text that the user will see when they um, are interacting with that drop down. So I'm just going to select, say, sorry, select box size. And in this next drop down, I can specify which values will populate the drop down tool. Now I have the option in here to connect to a file or connect a tool to the drop down tool to then populate the list. But I'm going to select manually set fields for this example. So from here, I need to type one option per line. So I'm simply going to type in three lines of six, 12 and 24. as There are three different box sizes. Now, if we want the user to see something different in the drop down, such as the word six or the word 12 or the word 24, I would have to type this in a really particular structure. I would need to type six and then a colon and then have the value six afterwards. This will populate the drop down with the word six and pass the value of six into our workflow. But this is not necessary for our example, so I'll just leave it as it is. Now, from here, we need to tell Alteryx how the value that the user selects will update our formula. And to do that, we'll need an action tool. Now, I can find this tool in the top left hand side of our interface tool palette. However, an easy way of adding this tool to the workflow is by simply dragging a connection from the queue of my drop down tool to the lightning bolt of my formula tool and one magically will appear. Now, before I set up this action tool, what does the queue and the lightning bolt mean? Essentially, the lightning bolt and the queue connector is how you link the values that the user configures in the macro with the part of the workflow that you would like it to update. OK, so now we need to set up the action tool to update the six that's currently in the formula, as you can see on my screen, with the number that the user specifies. So I'll select into the action tool. Firstly, the action type that we want is um, update value default, which allows us to update a specific value in the formula tool with the value that the user specifies. But there are also other options in there that we can use as well. Next, we need to specify the part of the formula tool that we want to update. So I'm going to expand out these options and we can see different elements that we can amend. Now we want to make the expression dynamic. So here we can see our formula expression. I'll just zoom in to make it a bit easier. However, we only want to update the six value at the very end, the value that our uh, units is being divided by. So um, I'll just click my expression that I want to update. And in the bottom left hand side of this configuration, I have the option to re replace a specific string, which allows me to be really specific with the element of the expression that I want to replace. Now I'm going to get rid of everything apart from the value six, as that's what we want to update. Great, so that's our logic set up. The final thing we need to do is add in a macro output, which will give our macro an output anchor containing our results. I'll just drag that onto the canvas and connect it up to my formula tool. And this is our completed macro. Now to actually use this, I first need to save it. I'm going to go to file, 
save as and browse. And I'm just going to call this standard macro. Now notice how the extension for this macro is .yxmc, and this is the macro extension in Alteryx. So I'll just click Save. Now I want to input this macro into my original workflow, which I can do by simply right clicking on the canvas. So I'll navigate to my original workflow. I'll delete my old macro. And if I right click on the canvas, I can go to Insert. And at the very bottom, we have the option to insert a macro. And here we can see the macro that I've just created, our standard macro. So I'll click on that and connect it up to my input data. And now we can test that this is working correctly. So I'll change my box size to say 24. Click Run and I can see on my output that the macro is working correctly. But how about if I use this on some different data? So if I scroll down, I have some similar data here. Um, with a list of numbers, but the column header is called quantity. It's not called units. So if I connect up this macro and change the box size to six and click run, you can see uh, we get an error. And this is because quantity is not being used at all in the macro in itself. So I'll go back to my macro. I need to go back into the macro input and I'm going to select this show um, field map option. So if I select that. Now it's really important that once I make a change to my macro, I save the macro before trying to rerun it. So a quick tip to help you identify whether any changes have not been saved is you'll see a little asterisk next to uh, the workflow name. So I'm just going to click File, Save. And if I head back to my workflow, I get a little message telling me that my macro has been updated, which is great. And I can now see in the configuration window um, on the left hand side, I have the option to map my fields. So I'm going to map my units field, which is being used within my macro to the quantity field, which is being used in this input. Now, if I click run, we can see the macro is working correctly. OK, so this is our first standard macro. I hope you found this video useful and now feel more confident setting up a standard macro. Now, I've linked this workflow and some additional resources that you might find useful below. And do reach out if you have any questions. If you're ready to deep dive into batch macros, click on the screen to move on to part two of this mini series. Thank you again for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.